the Guy Shannon and Clint podcast. Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to the podcast. Oh, it's a cast of pods. Why is it called a podcast? Um, it's a very good question. Guy, do you know? Just because he wears glasses iPod. doesn't mean he knows everything. It's an iPod, a, yeah. It's a broadcast on an iPod. I do know everything. I wear glasses. Booyakasha! <laughs> Shabanga! 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 If you, if you oh, listen to, to today's show, voice. I couldn't chow home. you might have heard Guy trying to coin the term Shabanga. Still a work in progress, but... Um, gonna I'm going to Google it right now to mm. see if Shabanga is actually already a word. So this is our first ever podcast. So this okay. is something we will be doing every single day. Um, and we are dedicated to it. I tell you that much. I personally listen to a lot of podcasts. It's the way I I, I listen to things. So yeah. I'm excited about hearing our podcast. And um, Shebang is already a thing. Did there I is, steal it? Yeah, there's a place in South Africa called the Shebanga Guest Farm. <laughs> yeah, what? It's it a probably farm means something. And, and it's on Urban Dictionary as used to describe something favorable at the right time, or just a way of saying thanks. Example: Johnny said Shebanga when he received a large amount of oh. Should read that. You just bummed me out. I am so depressed. I thought I'd come up with that. I am le- I'm leaving because okay. I'm sad. When Should I, I te- shabum ya? <laughs> <laughs> when I was a teenager, I thought I invented the term shish kebab. Anyway, um, this is our podcast. This is the, the stuff that happened on the show today. Our very first one. Guy Sharon and Clint. Well, good afternoon, everybody. I'm a wee bit puffed. And welcome along to something (laughs) brand new. (laughs) We made this thing where we were going to start every show with a pre-show dance, and we all just bumped and grinded together and (laughs) to R. Kelly's ignition. Bad idea, guys. I'm really, really puffed now. The whitest people in the world just jamming out to this awesome groove. Terrific song choice, though, Guy, (laughs) I might say. It was so good. We've already been getting a a few texts that have come in, thanks to my mum, Mary Ellen, for sending in a nice one. Always positive response from Mary. Ellen. Only person at the races with some headphones in right now in Wellington. That's so cute. Um, but one of the most common texts coming in is, who are you guys? <laughs> <laughs> What's going on? Where's Fletch and Vaughan? What's happened to Fletch and Vaughan? Fletch who are you? Fletch and Vaughan have moved to Tibet to become monks in a monastery. <laughs> <laughs> Good on them as well. I think it's a great thing to do. They got out of the radio game and that's what they do. I love how many people, because we've had this on the Facebook page and everything like that, Everyone wants to know where Fletch and Vaughan have gone. I love that huge... It's ironic that huge Fletch and Vaughan fans can't scatter Google the answer themselves. <laughs> like, it's very simple to find out, guys. We can't talk about it, but let's just say that they've moved on to different things. Yes, to bed. that's probably... They're going to be, to be monks. Yeah. No, notice how I was going to say moved on to better things, but then I pussied out. <laughs> But I'm sure they'll be doing awesome things really soon. But we we thought that we would uh, just play a little game with each other and also with you at home as well where you can get to know us because we're not horrible people. I mean, sure, some of us may yell a little loud down the microphone. Please don't bring that up. <laughs> but can I, can I just give Guy a little props for his how restrained his voice is so far? You're doing a good <laughs> I've job, I've been mate. told off for yelling down the microphone. Guys, I, my heart is yeah, beating sh- quite a lot at the moment. <laughs> I'm really nervous about this segment. And We've so been please. trying to plan it beforehand. <laughs> And I feel like this is going to be an absolute disaster. I can't think of a good question. We're going to, someone's going to say something awkward. It's going to reveal too much information. So what we're going to do is we're going to play a game called Getting to Know Guy, oh, Sharon, no. and Clint. You can ask us any question you want. Are you sure you want to do any question? There is no holes barred. This is like being in JJ, Mike, and Dom's truth booth. You uh, have to answer the question honestly. So this is such a bad idea. I reckon that we should. We we were going to create a family here. We yeah, all want to be open like and it. honest with each other. Honesty. Do and we have Do we have like one veto up our sleeves? Like, no vetoes. No vetoes. You have to be a completely. Can I just honest. say on the record before we start this that if it goes bad, I wasn't into it at the start. <laughs> all right. So let's do I a like demo. This. Let's do a demo for the people at home. Okay. Yep. We all get to ask each other one question each. I'll ask Guy a question. Guy will ask Clint a question. Clint will ask me a question. Who wants to go first? Clint. Okay, my question's for Sharon. Okay. Genuinely, does it upset you when people confuse you for Shannon Ryan? It doesn't upset me. <laughs> it doesn't upset me, but it's just like, come on, our names are slightly different, and we looked in completely different. She's <laughs> she's tall and looks like a model, and I'm slightly pudgy, a little bit shorter. Whoa, but Sharon, you're you know beautiful. What? I was I did a speech at a wedding on the weekend, and the guy introduced me as Shannon, and I was like, man, I can't oh, go happens, anywhere without it, being called it the right name every single day. <laughs> okay, good answer. You were honest with that. All right, I want the next question. I'm going to ask Guy Williams a question. <sighs> okay, yeah, Guy Williams. Yeah. 
What is your number? And I don't mean phone number. I mean... Oh, like sexy number. Sexy number. I don't know if I want to say this on air. This is... I, th- I honestly <laughs> thought... I thought you were going to ask me something worse, so it's better than what I thought you were going to ask me. Um... So I recently, someone recently told me when I was in Christchurch that Richie McCall was called Richie 1000 because he slept with a thousand women. <laughs> and I hate that so much because I don't want to be guy three. <laughs> oh, how old There's are you? something wrong with three. I'm not telling you how old I am now, so you can't do any maths. He's 27. I'm I'm very I'm a very careful person. That was very honest. Really, move, on, move on, move on, move on, move on. I would like rather one, you were three than a hundred. Don't dwell on me, don't okay, dwell on one me. One question from you and then we can move on. Clint, what is your biggest regret in your entire life? It's really lame what my biggest regret is. Mm. Like, re- it's lame. Mm. One time, my dad said that we should go for a bike ride. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, yeah, totally keen. He, he goes, okay, I'll get everything ready. He took the bikes away and got them ready, pumped up the tires and stuff. And by the time he came back, I had an offer from another friend to do something more fun, and I did that. And I've, re- oh. I've regretted that forever. I can understand that. I can understand that. That is sad. Getting to know you, getting to know all about you. Ask Guy, Sharon and Clint anything. I just really wanted to get Julie Andrews on the phone and on the show in some way. So there we go. Good, we've ticked that off. We can leave it now. We've got a whole lot of questions coming through. You can text them through to 3343 or you can call us on 0800 The Edge. Very similar to JJ, Mike and Don's Truth Booth. You can ask us anything you want. No holes barred. We have no veto and we have to answer everything. It's a terrifying experience for everybody. It is. But all of my questions are just sexual questions. Sharon, we've been going through the text machine and Sharon's questions have been, uh, uh, have you ever had a lesbian experience? Yes. What is your bra size? Have you had a threesome? <laughs> okay. <laughs> There's something really um, kind of misogynistic in just asking the chick all these sex questions. Yeah. So just to get, can we get this over and done with? The yes. answer is <laughs> yes. A 10 double D. And what was the last one? Uh, oh, uh, threesome. Have you had a threesome? <laughs> had a threesome? Mm, nah. <laughs> what? Why are no one? No, why is no one asking me these questions? Because okay, what's like, your bra size? Yeah. Bra size is small. Lesbo. Does a man sing with a woman? Lesbo. Yeah, you're lesbo. Yes, lesbo. <laughs> um, threesome. No, but up for anything. <laughs> <laughs> I remember up for anything is the funniest term, eh? Yeah. My my friend once found his mum had up for anything written on her Facebook page. He was real sad. Oh, that's gross. We have got another question coming through. Grant, who is your question for? Uh, for Shannon. Oh, Sharon. Sharon. Oh, Shannon. <laughs> Did you do that on purpose? It's, we're running. No, I did like the accent. Okay. <laughs> 22 <laughs> minutes have already been called Shannon. What's, Shannon. Your, what's your question, Grant? Um, does um, Sharon like to sit downstairs clean or she... Um, I mean, oh. More sex. More sex. Let's, let's, just, let's just say, Grant, I'm a woman of 2014. Good girl. Miss, <laughs> no, good girl. This okay, is right. so let's creepy. On, this this is, is the worst thing ever. Sharon, can and I then ask... I've got, then I've got one for um, old mate in the corner there. No right. more from oh, you. No, you can ask Guy what is the question. Mr. Guy, how are you? Bad. Is Leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> why, why, why do some days you seem such an angry little man? <laughs> Why do I seem angry? Because yeah. I'm because I think it's because I'm lonely and I'm so unsuccessful um, with with the woman. Probably is that a, is that a correct answer? Yeah. So uh, hey, look, you seem you're, you're awesome with everyone else though. So I don't know how can you be so unsuccessful with a woman. So <laughs> thank you very much. Well, I appreciate well, well, the compliment. Being on ten and you just ah, you're Grant. Awesome, so. <laughs> I appreciate it a lot, Grant. We'll give you yeah. guys a number. You guys can get in touch. Thanks for your call, Grant. <laughs> <laughs> Good afternoon, Sam. I understand that you have a question for Guy Williams. Yeah. All right, what's your question? Um, have you ever thought of being gay? Because <laughs> you need a gay person to be a proper show. Do we? Or to be a success story like JJ, Mike and Dom. Have I ever thought about being gay? That is the best question ever. And I'll answer that with, um, yes, I have. When I was um, young, I was really into interior design. And uh, uh, women's shoes. And so for a long time in the 90s, many people considered me to be gay. But I've since um, uh, discovered that I am, in fact, straight. So thank you very much for your question. Um, and uh, the answer is, yes, I have thought about it. But no, I'm, I'm generally not gay. Thank you, Sam. <laughs> is, that, is that for real? Yeah. <laughs> Everyone thought I was gay uh, in high school. It's because my name's Guy as well. It's quite easy to turn into it. Mm. 
But um, I'm not really attracted to men. But I've, you know, just saying that though, if men want to have offers, um, be- beggars can't be choosers. As well, well, we'll see what happens when you work with Clint a little longer. <laughs> Stacey, I'll turn you. you've got a question for both of the boys. What's your question? Kia ora, boys. Uh, yeah. I'm just wanting to know. Um, so I am uh, slightly on the heavier side, I guess. Yeah. And um, and I'm Maori, and I'm kind of down for a date. So would you guys go on a date with me? Well, I'm very desperate, so I'd say definitely yes, Cliff. <laughs> yes. um, I've got a new girlfriend, so I will politely decline, uh. but based not on your weight or your race. Sharon, okay, good. Sharon, what are you into? What are you? What's your answer? She wasn't asking me if I wanted to go on a Just, date with I'm her. asking you right now. I'm not picky. Well, I'm married, so I guess it would be frowned oh, upon, disappointing. It? We've got, what's your name? Leave your number afterwards, and I'll definitely go on a date with you. <laughs> cool, thanks, guy. We're going to do some quick fire questions now because we've, we've almost done with this. All right. Sharon, if your husband and your dog were about to be hit by a car and you could only save one of them, who would you save? Oh, that's a really intense question. I definitely... Um yeah, I'd save my husband. <laughs> <laughs> I just think about that, but yeah, I'd, I would save my husband. Oh. Clint, someone wants to know your favourite pastime about being in a playhouse. Ah, oh, just playing? With what? <laughs> what were you playing with? Just, how do they know I've got a playhouse? I don't know. <laughs> how do they know I've got a playhouse? Someone's stalking you, mate. Yeah. You can answer the question, honestly. Just playing, just general, general playing, general chit-chat in okay. the playhouse. Guy Williams, what was your first ever job? Uh, I worked at McDonald's in Tahuna Nui in Nelson, and I was very bad, and they put me out the back so, quote, no one could see my face. Last two questions. One, Guy, how did you get your name at the start of your show when you're doing the least amount of work? <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to know that one. Very good question. I bribed the boss. Yep. Fair bluff. And the last one is, do you guys like Russians? Yep. Love them. Love yep. that. What's well, not to love? Except for their policy on the Winter Olympics. Not too down with that. <laughs> yeah, okay, not down with that. 26 past three, it's the edge. Hey, thanks for playing. I'm glad that's over. We got through that relatively unscathed, so it's good. Well, talk about you. I feel like I've been hung outside <laughs> naked. I feel, I hope my mum wasn't listening to this. Bit of a problem, guys. Thought I'd bring it up as a group discussion. I'm an awkward Is it greeter. Your ye- oh, sorry, it, what, what? I it was your yelling. Never mind, carry on. <laughs> I'm an awkward greeter. And I have this problem. I had this problem when I was meeting Paramore yesterday. I didn't know what to do. I shook their hands okay. very formally. Yeah. Last night on the phone, when I was talking to Cher's dog, we're, Sharon, we were talking, we are having a great conversation. Look forward to the show tomorrow, babe. Have a great show. It's going to be fun. Lots of fun. When I hung up, I go, all right, see you tomorrow. And then I go, <laughs> and did a kiss down the phone. I kissed down the phone to Sharon, a married lady who I have never had a relationship <laughs> with in my life. It was so awkward. And this just sums it up. I can't meet women on the street of any age because when I try and hug them, I don't know whether to kiss their face or to hug their heads or to put my head next to theirs and going to pat them on the back like they're a little baby that I've just met. <laughs> and they try and kiss me sometimes and their kiss like goes up the side of my cheek. That's always a bit weird. So does anyone know in the world out there what the official protocol for meeting and hugging women is? You are genuinely quite an awkward person anyway. Yeah, it's the story of my life. Male or female. But I'm actually quite glad that you brought this up. Yeah. Because I don't know either. I reckon it's girls that we need to ask because dudes, it's just like, hey man, just have a handshake. Yeah, yeah, it's tight. Tight, bro. Just, yeah. Fist bump. Man, yeah. man. Maybe quick back. Do you pat. boys just want to keep talking about this, or do you want to ask some girls? <laughs> I mean, we've, got a, we've got a real life lady here. <laughs> I mean, I know sometimes I dress a little bit tomboyish, but I can actually help you out with this pop, oh, bro. I have the problem with you too, Shazog. It's not like you've, you're nailing it either, because we hug um, sometimes. Yeah, I have to put up with your awkwardness, and I don't know what to do either, because <laughs> last week I hugged Guy, like, hello, because Guy hugs me literally four times a day. <laughs> <laughs> And he cradled the back of my head, <laughs> and I didn't know what I didn't know quite what was going. I was like, "That's so affectionate." And he went home to my husband. I was like, "I think guy's got a crush on me." <laughs> he cradled my head today, and then last night you kissed me down the phone. Uh, I don't know. I, we honestly need people to help out. Did oh, you hear through the edge right now? Did you hear t- that kiss? Yes. Oh God, sorry. It was so awkward. I didn't know what you were doing. So we put this out there to ladies, guy. Are we asking ladies. Ladies, call in. What is the protocol? Do we do we hug and kiss? Do Just we, hug. Do we give you a man handshake? Yeah. Do we... Um, slap butts together? That's an option. <laughs> that's, a, that's a joke there. Don't do that. That's a bad. I'll, I'll slap your butt. I'll wait 100 the edge. <laughs> Fill us in. What's the protocol? <laughs> no, no, wait. Hang on. You have... No, you are awkward. Because when we first started working together last year... Oh. I slapped Clint on the bum like a good... <laughs> <laughs> and then I walked past and Guy goes... What's up, Shaz dog? And he slapped me on the bum, but instead of slapping me on the bum like a... He did like a... 
flat, no, and then he dragged his no, hand down my arm. No, I didn't. Down my bum like he was patting me. This isn't real. Give it's it so call. awkward. <laughs> Natalie, please help Guy out. What should he be doing? So, I think you can kiss and hug a woman if they've been introduced. Like, say your friend's like, oh, hi, this is Sharon. Meet her. Then it's okay to kiss and hug them. If, like, you're meeting them for the first time without anyone else there, I think it's just that real awkward, like, oh... You know, you're standing there and you do the awkward kiss and hug thing. So kiss and hug, and yeah. if and if you don't know them, then double yeah. kiss and hug. No, no. Like, did if you're being introduced to them, like say hi, this is Sharon, blah blah blah, and they're a friend of yours, then yeah, it's fine. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Okay. 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 I'm taking notes here, but there's quite a lot of information <laughs> to get in. Basically, Otherwise, it's just awkward. If there's a mutual, okay, I'll say it slow for you. If there's a mutual friend there. Give them a kiss. Yeah. If yeah. it's a one-on-one situation, just shake their hand. What if it's your mum? <laughs> then pass her. I don't know. You're from <laughs> Nelson. Thanks, Natalie. Cassie, what's your advice? Uh, my advice is that it's such a girl code thing that girls always do the big hug. Hey, how's it going? Mm. And a bit of a smooch, smooch on the cheek. But nothing that's going to read "I want you." It's more of that, you know, it's a girl <laughs> thing. <laughs> it's it's more, Cassie. I think I don't know. You I put, want you. You kind of touch cheeks and you make the noise, but mm. you don't actually kiss their face. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So, so yeah, you, you bo- get those girls, they do the mwah, mwah, but then you get the girl thing where they actually do embrace. They do give you a bit of a peck on the cheek, so but you- it doesn't actually clarify that they're trying to... K- Hook up with you. Yeah. It's just more of that, um, you know, friendly thing. We understand. We understand. You ear kiss. You touch cheeks and ear kiss. That's a good technique. Yeah, and just whatever mm. you do, don't ever be the mouth kisser. No one likes that, guys. <laughs> Zoe, what's your advice? I always cuddle. Whether I know them or I don't know them, I always give people a hug. I think that's the safest way. But then when a girl tries to kiss you when you're trying to hug them, it turns into an absolute nightmare because <laughs> you've, 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 you've um, spurned them. You've pushed them away. You're just going to make a joke out of it, don't you, Zoe? Yeah, you, you just go with it. So if they go to kiss you, you just give them a kiss back on the mm. cheek and that's it. You've, I've, I've always done it, whether I've been on a night out or meeting people for lunch, I always just give them a cuddle. And this- if they go to kiss me on the k- cheek, I'll... Kiss them back. This is just complicated the issue because there's too many options here. Mm. From now on, and this is everyone in the country, we just do handshakes. Okay. Problem solved. Loved ones, handshake. Grandma, handshake. Prostitute, handshake. <laughs> it doesn't matter who it is, a handshake is a formal greeting. Wow. <laughs> wow. Oh, I don't think we got any clarification, but we got something you out of that. You just do the ear kiss. Don't do the head cradle. Don't do the bum. Oh, I got it. I got it. I've got it sorted. Just- <laughs> <laughs> the bum thing just a bit of encouragement, like, shh, psh, psh, good no, on you, mate. No, but it wasn't a swish, it was lingering. You You're lingered. not supposed to do it to women, I realise that now. I've learnt my lesson. Guys, Sharon and Clint's awesome apologies. I'm sorry! Awesome apologies is a segment where you get to apologise for something that you've done. Maybe it's something that's been... Eating away at you for so long, like my husband, for example, could ring in and apologise for leaving my special Tupperware at work today, which I just found in the kitchen. You can apologise for anything. It could be something that you did that was rather sinful over the weekend. We want to clear your conscience. I've got a genuine apology, guys, and it was also a genuine accident, so don't judge me too harshly. So it, when you say this, you are actually being genuine, you're not yes. being... Okay. okay, so it's an athletics meet. It's so awkward. An athletics meet... Out in West Auckland, I went there to support my friends. I turned up. The guys at the starting line were quite skinny, uncoordinated, struggling to get into the blocks. I thought it was a high-powered athletics meet. So I yelled out to people in the stadium in my loud, annoying voice, Who the hell are these amateurs? When I sat down, I found out that it was the New Zealand Special Olympics team. No. So can I just apologise? It's so awkward. This is the laugh at me, guys, because I'm such an idiot. And uh, I can't laugh at that. Can I just say I'm sorry to um, everyone who heard that. I'm a loud mouth and I'm an idiot and I sincerely apologise. Is that a real thing that happened? Yeah, this is the story of my life, mate. I go around just screwing up everywhere I go. I can't hug people properly. I say things that are stupid and embarrass myself. <laughs> this is the sad reality of my life. Oh you insulted my our gosh. National Paralympics athletics team. I'm sure they're excellent at what do they do. Do you know how many badges you're going to have to buy from those people outside the supermarket to make up I'm gonna for that? Support, I'm going to get behind them, absolutely. <laughs> that is so terrible. <laughs> I, I, it was a mistake. Everyone says things that are mistakes sometimes, so I want to apologise for that. We want to know other people want to apologise yeah, for yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah, let's open the lines. Don't make your... me the only one who's stuffed up. <laughs> Georgia, you know how this works. What would you like to apologise for? Hey, um, I just wanted to apologise for uh, pushing in front of the Paramore line last night. I ended up getting 
within half a metre to the um, front of the mosh pit. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, seeing Hayley look at me. It was did, awesome. Did you know that you cut in front of people who were queued up for up to 30 hours outside Victor yep. Arena last night and you just showed yep. up and pushed your way to the front? Oh, not quite. I had a friend that was um, waiting in line since 9 o'clock in the morning and... <laughs> No, Cut the line. Walk okay, that's a good apology. Thank you, Georgia. It, well, Thank it you. felt more like a humble brag, actually. <laughs> <laughs> that's what it felt oh, like. Honestly, Paramore was amazing. Best <laughs> it's one of those so, hashtags, sorry, not sorry, sorry situations. Not sorry. Exactly. Pretty much, pretty what, much. What's your awesome? Sam, who would you like to apologise to? Um, I'd like to apologise to my ex-girlfriend because I should never have let her go and she's the most amazing girl in the whole entire world. Oh. What's, what's her name? I'm going to say Louise. Louise, if you're out there, he loves you. Take him back. What give give him another go. Why did you break up with her, though, Sam? Um, I was in a course, and it was just getting really tough and emotional for me, like, personally. So Stop I talking, hang up the phone, and go get her back, <laughs> go mate. Hurry up. Flowers. Okay, yes, okay thank yep. you. All right, bye, Sam. Oh, God. All right, Emma, what would you like to apologise for? <laughs> I farted in class. <laughs> <laughs> Apology accepted. Next caller. <laughs> How long ago was this, Eva? Oh, it was a, probably it was in my year eleven exams. And how long ago were you year 11, Emma? <laughs> About two years. Oh. Oh. You've been holding on to this guilt for this long. What did you do? I'm lactose intolerant too, so oh. that made it even louder. Oh, God. And did you blame it on somebody oh. else? Is that why you're sorry? Yes, because they... Folded their legs and the teacher blamed them. Oh, that is stink. All the right, plot well. thickens. <laughs> Thanks, Emma. Thanks to your call, Emma. Oh, I'm so proud of it's us. Right. We managed to go an hour and a half without a fart joke. We oh, got it in there, though, guys. Fire. Yes. We've got quite a heavy one on the phone right now. He has had to be given a fake name. It was that much of an apology. Simba, good afternoon. Good fake name. Good afternoon. <laughs> Hello, Simba. What would you like to apologise for? I'd like to apologise to my wife for Zeusley for sleeping with a hot 53-year-old on the weekend. <gasps> Simba, this is bad. First of all, it's profusely, not profusely. <laughs> yeah, OK. Second of all, what are you doing, mate? You're ruining... What are you, oh, oh, she, you make me so angry. She came on to me and I had a few drinks. Oh, you oh, Simba. Oh, no, that old excuse. You, uh, what, what does she do? You can't apologise to his wife. You just got to let it go and never cheat her on again. Oh, this is the worst thing. Do you think you'll ever tell her, Simba? No. Let's just hope she doesn't recognise your well, voice. Well, then you're not, re- you're not really sorry <laughs> then, are you, Simba? Oh, I am. Wait, I don't know Simba, you you're are. a bit of a douche, aren't you, mate? <laughs> <laughs> yep. Okay. Well, do we have the opposite of a prize to give him? Can we take something from okay, his house for this one? No. Him. Simba, don't cheat on your wife ever again or I'm going to hunt you down. I don't know what to do. Okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> oh. Get rid of him. I, Not al- I almost didn't want to say his real name on the radio, no, but I won't. No, just move on. Doug, what do you want to apologise for? Hey, guys. Um, I want to apologise to a small boy that I uh, came across at the... Uh, Pukakura Park in New Plymouth on Sunday we're at the cricket this yeah. is going to be okay, good I'm um, so glad you just said that part okay carry on <laughs> this is not dodgy but um, <laughs> we're watching uh, the Netherlands versus Papua New Guinea which was a hell of a game to watch great game and um, little Wait. boy he dropped, he dropped his water bottle and he came rolling down the hill it got quite steep sides at Pukakura Park and so I picked it up and took it up to him and, and he was so cute he was about three years old and he sort of went thank you and as I went I was so impressed I went to pat him on the head and I actually sort of accidentally sort of karate chopped him in the middle of his nose <laughs> and the little boy burst into tears oh, thanks Doug, Doug. No, that's a good awesome apology that is just to wrap it up a couple tweet of machine is blowing up yeah. sorry to my mum for finding out I was expecting my first child uh, for funny, I was expecting my first child from my friend. Oof. Real awkward. That yeah. is awkward. I love this segment, though. It's clearing the air, in some cases, better than others. Yeah. That was a good one. Oh, that's your, that's your text of Thanks, the day. everyone, for um, calling in. <laughs> Those are awesome apologies. Every Monday we're going to do them, okay? So remember that right here, right now, is where you get to get, oh, get, get the slate you. clean. And it's my hair, right? Yeah. What if I brush Air it Air your side? grievances. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Paramore were on last night. They yeah. absolutely smashed it at Victor Arena in Auckland. Me and Clint... Clint. <laughs> sorry, Clint. It's all right. Me and Clint it's right, goo. <laughs> went along for a awesome interview. Um, where were you, Shaz Dog? I was away at one of my best friend's wedding, but I heard that you guys... Um Bought me up and humiliated me. <laughs> we this we made a couple happen- of mentions. This always happens to me. JJ, Mike, and Dom always humiliate me with um, people I'm a big fan of. If yeah. you guys have done this to me, ag- if, is this what you've done? <laughs> a little bit. We've given you a bit of a rough time because you're a bit of an intense fan. Yeah.
If you guys use the word creepy, I'm going to whack <laughs> both of you. <laughs> Let's not get ahead of ourselves. This is the chat that Guy and I had yesterday with Hayley and Jeremy and Taylor backstage at Victor Arena before the Paramore show. So I'm Guy. I'm Clint. Nice. And I'm Guy. And this is Guy. <laughs> uh, Sharon's, not, Sharon's not here today. Um, Sharon, where's Sharon? She's Sharon. dead. She's, she's not, not dead. She's not dead. She's not dead, she's sorry. Been, she's been at a wedding. <laughs> she's away. Sorry. She's, up, she's, she's doing some bombs somewhere. She's doing some bombs up north, but she's gutted that she can't be here. She's one of your guys' creepiest fans. Nice. That's cool. <laughs> we love those. I don't know. I think she's interviewed you guys before on multiple occasions, and... Uh, she bought the jacket that you were wearing in the Still Into You video <laughs> because you were wearing it in the Still Into You video. That's a good jacket. It's it hard is to a find. good one. It's also. a good jacket. I feel she doesn't wear it with enough confidence, though. Well, it's not the most comfortable leather jacket, to be honest with you, but I've also yet to wear it in the rain or run over it with my car, which I've heard these are the things that make a really great leather jacket. <laughs> yeah. So. yeah. You've got to break them in a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Well, guys, put on his best shorts for the interview. So yeah, nice. Do you, do you appreciate what he's wearing, by the way? I, yeah, I picked him up and I sort of thought. Yeah. I told you not to talk about this. How would you How would you describe his outfit? How can you not talk about it? Honestly, <laughs> see, this is radio. What do you see? It's in front like of you? Fresh Prince meets I don't know Oklahoma City basketball team. <laughs> this is a Stephen Adams jersey. He's um, New Zealand's best basketball um, player. He, he gets about three rebounds a game. He's not very good. He's, nah. he's, he's terrible, but he's still giving it a good crap. We're proud of him anyway. That's awesome. I heard about a fan. I was reading something about a fan in Australia who followed you to every concert and was in the front row. Yeah. Or some people are yeah. here tonight, too. A- Alison Bogue, you had her on stage in Perth? Yeah. Every, so she comes every day. And is that scary? She's there every time in the front row. She's cool. She's really cool. I actually saw her the last day we were in Australia, too, like on our off day. Ran into her at a coffee shop. <laughs> I was like, now I'm following you. How does it feel? <laughs> That's hilarious. She's I, cool. I feel like um, Sharon is your New Zealand equivalent I, of that. I think she is, though. She's really upset that she can't be. I think the boss didn't want her to come because she's I just think a the record label didn't want her to come. <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> yeah. Man, it um it smells like up dog in here. What's up, dog? Not Hi. much. How are you? I'm hey. good. I got Clint with that earlier, and I was like, should I try on Paramore? He's like, don't try it on Paramore. <laughs> <laughs> it's a terrible idea. But I thought I'd give it a crack anyway. Yeah, uh, also, I did prepare for this interview. I also, um, I also bought some uh, cookies as well. If anyone would like some cookies. Interesting. Oh, wow. They tell us not to eat fan gifts yeah. and then things that people bring to shows, but I do. It's okay. This guy's not a fan. <laughs> There's no drugs in them, I promise. Nice. My mum made them. Nice. Oh, no, I feel like I'm just yeah, my mum. Yeah, they're from my mum. No, no. Actually, there might be some drugs in them for my mum. <laughs> no, no, no. Awkward that you only bought four cookies to a five-person interview, though. Oh, well, no, no cookies for you, just for the band. Oh, just okay. Band. I was about to take a cookie. It's all right. I'm not. I'm yeah, not a big one, dessert dog. fan. You can have mine. Do that. Doesn't eat any I don't have We're giving. I, I, I also bought um, some milk and some. Uh, <laughs> Some cups as well. If anyone wants some milk and some drinks, just this is why we like Auckland. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's another reason. Hospitality. Yeah. I feel like my granny has these. Oh yeah, definitely. They, Do you have these in your house? These they're mugs? from my flat. Yeah, they're from my flat. They look like grandma mugs. I clean yeah. them especially because normally my stuff in the flat isn't that clean. These are great. Oh, thank you very much. The cookies are amazing too. Eh? Yeah, uh-huh. from Roseanne Williams and Nelson. The cookies are a little dry, to be honest with you. Hayley, I heard you. Oh, they're not <laughs> they're my mum's cookies, man. Yeah. The milk that guy bought, by the way, wasn't just a glass of milk. He bought a two litre bottle of milk in a plastic <laughs> bag and just plonks it on the table. Here's some milk. This is actually one of the most awkward things I've ever heard. <laughs> Why is it so? It was, we were having a great time. Sharon, uh, you're happy with the interview so far and how it's going along? <laughs> We mentioned we mentioned you a couple of times. Yeah, you guys mentioned me calling me creepy. Yep. And yep. that I was their biggest stalker fan. You're welcome. No need to thank us. We also spoke to <laughs> their genuine biggest fans who queued outside for 30 minutes. 30 minutes? Do you mean hours? Hours. That Sorry. Was, that, that Get is, it right, that's mate. That's more interesting. <laughs> How long have you guys been queuing here? Uh, 2 p.m. yesterday. That's the Why did you get here at 2 p.m. yesterday? It's front or nothing. I'm short. I have to be on the barrier. <laughs> yeah. Did you sleep here? I, I, I bought $96 worth of food and chili bins and beds and blankets and... Yeah. Can I just put a call out to your parents to, <laughs> to put a stop to this? Hey, hey, Dad dropped off and picked up all my gear, so... Your, your dad that. is either the best parent in the world or the worst. I'm not sure which one. Uh, I'm alive, aren't I? <laughs> yeah. <laughs>
That's a lot of stuff to be carrying around a concert. Yeah. Like, it's hard enough with a handbag, let alone a chili bin and a blanket. <laughs> I love how her credentials for her dad being good is that she's alive. Well done, Dad. <laughs> Couple more minutes with Paramore. This is what we got yesterday. Hayley, I, I heard that you, uh, you tweeted that you were into pies in New Zealand. Yeah. Is this a thing? Is this what you come here for? Are there people that aren't into pies <laughs> in the world? Is it a New Zealand specific thing or um, no? We had really good ones last time we were here. Yeah. So I was just kind of hoping someone would just shove some in, in my face <laughs> while, we were, <laughs> while we were over. I wish I bought some pies now. What's your pie of choice? Well, I don't eat a ton of meat, but I love meat pies. Mm. And I like, I think the ones that the ones we had last time that were the really good ones were like the steak and mushroom ones or something mm. like that. They were good. I don't remember what they were. I think that's they what it good, was. Though. But anyways, I don't know. I think um, I'm down for any of them. Mm. A, c- a, a couple of um, a couple of professional like radio um, questions now. Um, can you guys make any cool animal sounds? Oh, I'm on voice rest. <laughs> oh, that's nice. Me too. <laughs> Dang, that was the last one to say. I don't know. Have you, what kind of animal sounds? Yeah. I'll put make, you on the spot here. What I'm about a rabbit? Noise. I'll do a rabbit noise. You ready? Yeah. They don't make any noise. Sorry. Do <laughs> <laughs> rabbits not make any sound? Not really. I think they do. I you had got, a rabbit. You got me there. They get night when you go to yeah, sleep. They're shoot. like, ah. Yeah. <laughs> um, Haley said she wouldn't make any noise, but she made like a call for us, and we really appreciate it. <laughs> um, you guys unfortunately had to can one of your Christchurch shows. You're not going to be able to make it down to Christchurch this time. Uh-huh. Um, do you want to say anything to your Christchurch fans? Have you got a message for them that you want to get out there? Yeah, I mean, the last time we played Christchurch, it was really unbelievable and a beautiful city, and we, I mean, we loved it. And I, uh, to be honest with you, we aren't 100% sure why everything got canceled. It wasn't like our call, you know, but um, but we really do. We, we loved our time there last time, and we can't wait to eventually get back. Next time. Next time, Next time yeah. Yeah, yeah. Next time, only Christchurch. <laughs> oh, yeah. No Auckland. No Auckland. Peace. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Nice. Okay. Yeah. Any more professional radio questions? From I'm, you? I'm out of questions. Yeah. You, you guys have been so fantastic. Thank you so much. Yeah. Um, we're really professional, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much. Um, we're looking forward to the show. Thank you. Nice. No cookies cool. in my teeth. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Floss your teeth before you go on stage. Yeah, okay. yeah. <laughs> Guy Sharon and Clint on the bloody edge. The cricket was last night. The Black Caps knocked off the number one team in the world. India, it was superb. I'm back on the bandwagon, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I jump on as quickly as I possibly can. One thing I took away from the game, besides obviously what a great game it was, was the uh, Tui Cat campaign. Ah, oh, the Catch, Catch a Million. A million. It's taking over thing. the world and it is fantastic, but I'm a little bit sceptical. Yeah. Why? It is. Is cold catch a million, fine, love it, awesome idea, but if you catch a ball one-handed while wearing a t-shirt and official lanyard, you only get $100,000. Yeah, because the reason that they've done that is that there's 10 opportunities of $100,000, which adds up to a million. If it's cold catch a million and you catch the ball, you should get a million. (laughs) He's right. It's an absolutely flawless plan. But this way they are spreading it out so more people can win. Absolute classic New Zealand. Call it catch a million, only make it (laughs) $100,000. I think that's so funny. You're being so rough. I think we should do it. I think we should step in as a show. This is our opportunity to crash the party and start a phenomenon that takes New Zealand by storm. So I we should go and try and catch the ball. We should go. We, no, 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 no. We start our own campaign that's better than Tui's, where people win a million bucks if they wear our t-shirt or something along those lines. So you're lines. saying that we should send people along in our own shirts, yeah, edge ones and, or something like that, and catch the ball. And if they catch our one, they yeah. win a million dollars. But no one's even going to catch it. That's why Tui, Tui gave away one, and it was a dude who caught it. People are too drunk because they're in the Tui competition anyway <laughs> to catch it. Like the, Tui knows it's not plausible. Yeah. We've just got to make it a little bit difficult, right? Because I mean, we probably can't. Can we give away a million dollars? We don't. Ha- we we've never. Where given, are we going to get a million? We don't have a million. I thought. I thought previously you guys did a million dollar prize, a million dollar beach dig or something like yeah, that. Yeah, that was years in the planning, <laughs> and that was the budget gone. Like, yeah, you and you have to get insurance and these sorts of things. That's like thirty thousand dollars. You got thirty grand. Not at the moment, but I can rustle it up, I'm sure. Hey, don't ask questions, guys. Don't, guys, don't let the dream end, all right? We're going to start a campaign that's bigger. Are you being serious? Like, you yeah. actually want us to do this? Yeah, 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 okay. What if we had people like, we can't do a t-shirt, obviously. What if we had people like, we gave people like novelty edge hats and we had them like catch catch the ball on the hat? <laughs> so instead of catching it with one hand, they have to catch it in the hat. Yeah. And if they catch it in the hat, then they yeah. win a million dollars. The million. edge million dollar catch in a hat. 
it's already taken off, guys. I can feel it. <laughs> Two people have already heard of it. You guys have. Catch in a hat. It's going to be a big thing. <laughs> this sounds like a terrible idea. Should we have it anyone's hat or do we have to wear a specific... We've got to have a specific edge hat, I eh? feel like... I, one, I feel like this is never going to happen. Catch in a hat. T- two, I feel like there need to be some restrictions. Cause, no. Because this is the way Tui can do it because you, there are so many conditions. You have to be wearing the official yeah. Tui t-shirt, yeah. have drunk nine Tuis and be wearing a Tui lanyard. You've got to be wearing the official edge sombrero. Should go sombrero, cowboy hat. What <laughs> that, options have we got This makes here? it even easier. Okay, we're going to make a smaller cap. <laughs> yeah. A small, like, um, a catch it in a, um, what are those Jewish hats called? Yarmulkes. A yarmulke. Catch it in a yarmulke. <laughs> A, an edge branded yarmulke that people wear along to the gigs. Look, oh mate, my god! I mean, this is a new show, to and the cr- no, no idea is a bad idea. This in a is brainstorm. a good idea. I feel like it needs work. <laughs> can, can, we, on this, guys. can we? Can we? maybe have a have a, Can we sleep on it? We'll sleep on it. We're going to give you twenty four hours to come up with a better plan than this. I'll tell you what, catching the hat's going to take off, guys. Hashtag <laughs> catching the hat. Let's let's see your chance to win a million dollars. When's the cricket tomorrow? Let's do it tomorrow. That's Wednesday in Hamilton. Oh my god. It's going to be good. Where are you even going to get a million dollars from? <laughs> Don't worry about details. Uh, you're right over there, mate? No. Earlier in the day. No, we, earlier in the day, five minutes ago. No, we, no, no. Earlier in the day, we were talking about my awkward interactions. I did another one, guys. In a break, I, Sharon may have hugged me, so I may have kissed her on the head. <laughs> That was it. Was no, he like he how he held me tenderly between his breasts. Oh, just, whoa, whoa! That's exactly <laughs> what it was. Milk but, you. Then, but then he like he kissed my forehead, and I, without a word of a lie, exactly you can see exactly yeah. where he kissed me. This is ridiculous. I've got a rash. <laughs> no, you don't. I she do. thinks she's got a rash from me kissing look. her. I I'm kissed a, you on I the hair. Okay, can I tell you what's happening there? Can you see it? You you do have a rash on your forehead, Thank you. but he didn't give it to you. You're so paranoid about this kiss from guy on your forehead that you've actually manifested a rash on your forehead. Like you are thinking <laughs> I'm allergic to you. Existence. I'm allergic to you. Stay anyway, away from my Anyway, I did not give you an STD or a kiss TD or whatever it is. You gave Chang. me a pash TD. Chang's, Chang's in the studio. Here. Hey, Chang. <laughs> I'm just enjoying this argument in studio. Chi, yes. chi ho, ho Chang. You, didn't, you told me just before you didn't want me to use your full name because you said, quote, it'll make it too confusing for people. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got Sharon Casey, Clint Roberts, Guy Williams. Why can't you have two names too? Yeah. He's Chang Hung. That's his stage name. It turns out he's Hung not. Hung is not your name, mate. You're living, you're living, a, 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 you're living in the past. Chi Ho Chang. It's a beautiful name and you should be proud Chang, of it. Chang Hung is a stage name, just like um, someone else that has a stage name. <laughs> Drake. Anyway. <laughs> just Ch- like Drake. Chang, your weird life continued today, this what morning, when you acted like it was Apocalypse Now. You were walking around <laughs> from person to person trying to get $3. I was like, why is he going to get $3? Is he going to get his car towed? Has he been arrested <laughs> by the police and that the bail's only $3? No. Chang wanted to buy a New Zealand Herald because there hadn't been one delivered today, Chang. My world came to an end this morning no. when I turned up to work. Seriously, it did. Why didn't you just pay FPOS? I don't have any money left. You should do. Aww. I have 97 cents Chang, left on my bank account. Why wasn't the newspaper, why wasn't the New Zealand Herald delivered today? I have no idea. It's been happening You do. Last... Don't. You lie to me. I talk to you off air and you say the truth and then you come on air and you lie. You told me why the newspaper wasn't delivered today. <laughs> Why was the newspaper was not a, delivered today? That was a rumour I heard that yeah. the guy who delivered the newspaper died. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's don't laugh. Chain. That's true. No, no, that's, no, that's true. It's true. Yeah, yeah, no. The guy that delivered yeah. our newspaper I, did pass away. I can't believe you're laughing. That doesn't, I'm not laughing at a guy dying. I'm laughing at the fact that that's the excuse for the newspaper not arriving. And, and the fact, I would just like to point out that this, <sighs> this man did tragically pass away like a year ago. A year ago! That doesn't mean the newspaper. The newspaper's <laughs> come between a year ago and now. Lower your voice. I'll let yeah, the dogs come here. Calm down. Guys are ridiculous. So, yeah, it's... Because I like I like the newspaper I like my hands dirty Like touching the newspaper The ink stuff And the, you know Fine prints and stuff So, um. so yeah So I looked everywhere Because we are in a building That's with major radio stations None of them had A New Zealand Herald paper So were you concerned no. For everybody? Yeah because I no was, one else Is getting their hands dirty With the fine print No no you know what What was the worst thing I didn't even spend three dollars I went to the library next door And they did not have The newspaper there You were the cheapest man in the world I remember I brought this up to a lady in the kitchen and I go Chang says the newspaper hasn't been delivered because the guy died and she was like oh no he hasn't died again has he <laughs> <laughs> Chang you're a legend mate and you're a weird man as well and that's why I love you that is the biggest first world problem that I've heard massive, all day massive Chi Hai have you got the paper sort of for tomorrow I don't know yet I'm well the guy's fun. died a year ago so there's no more papers ever obviously <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> it's 13 minutes past cool story, 6 o'clock. Guy. The Guy, Sharon and Clint podcast. So that was a podcast, everybody. Thank you for joining us on our very first one. Um, it's going to be, if you're asking, oh, why is it only on the website, not on iTunes? It's going to be on the iTunes as soon as possible. We're just waiting for Steve Jobs' people to give us the okay so that we can get it up on there. <laughs> I love when things are on the iTunes. Well, it's... Can, I listen to it on, can I listen to it on the iPod? Yeah, you can. <laughs> Maybe I could download it from the Facebook. <laughs> Shank's getting real gutted because we're burning him real good. Zing, 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 my zing. Name, my name's Clint. <laughs> my name is Clint. You just call him Chang. Clint's real pissed off because I called him Chang. Zing, 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 zing. <laughs> okay. Hey, what you just heard was our first attempt at doing um, the new radio show. Yes, so we're hopefully going to get better. We're hopefully still going to be on tomorrow. I don't want to get any better. I think we've we've got, we've got reached our peak, guys. <laughs> Great. We better start looking for another washed up celebrity comedian. <laughs> <laughs> What's Mike King doing? Okay. <laughs> um, Selling pork. <laughs> not anymore. He's anti pork. Um, oh, thanks for joining us. Why is he anti pork? Because they kept them in crates. Mike King decided on his last day of being in a multi year pork deal that he would um, be Save. against pork. <laughs> After endorsing it for like years yeah. and talking about how much he loved it, he on his very last day of his contract he was like, hey, actually, actually, pigs are kept in really cruel conditions. Yeah. Is but that was, a true story? That's true. That's up? pretty that's much true. true. It's ru- it's roughly true. But since then, though... <laughs> so, hang on. Mo- it's definitely true. It's pretty much true. It's roughly true. So, it could just be a rumor. No, well, it may not be technically the last day. It was like a week into his before his contract ended. But since then, though, Mike has gone on to amazing things. He runs an appliance shed and does a... Uh, a podcast and radio show helping um, people with mental illness. So it's actually turned out real good for him. That's right. He does a live radio show. The Nutters Club. It's really, actually really, really good. So sometimes every every cloud has a silver lining. It's a show on Murray TV as well. Check it out sometime, Clint. That's the podcast. We'll catch you back tomorrow.